Hey everybody, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description of this video for some of the best online retailers. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. Uh, this is the Mike Emler and Artisan Cutlery Sea Snake. This is a fixed blade. Um, I don't do a lot of fixed blade reviews on this channel. I'm kind of picky. Uh, I'm normally a folding knife person and that's because folding knives just work for me day to day. They're smaller objects. They fold up. They're a little more compact. Um, now I'm not, you know, saying that uh, fixed blades in general aren't useful. They definitely are. Uh, it just depends on the setting, right? Um, this is smaller, uh, more compact, more lightweight, um, and it has a really interesting shape and handle profile, uh, one that I think is more beneficial for me. So um, when uh, Mike reached out to me, I said, yeah, I would actually really like to take a look at that. So you can find this guy right down in the description if you're interested. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down there as well. Uh, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is going to be a, qu a pretty quick review because it's a fixed blade and my thoughts are pretty straightforward on it. Overall length on the Sea Snake is coming in at 6.75 inches overall and blade length is coming in uh, definitely over three inches. That's about three and an eighth, maybe a little more. Cutting edge is coming in at about 1.9 inches overall. How about some size comparisons um, up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the uh, Ontario Rat Model 2? You can see here that the Rat 2 is actually larger than this guy, but they are fairly similar in overall size. How about up against the um, Spyderco PM2? and a Spyderco Para 3. You can see here, once again, closer in size to the Para 3, uh, but still definitely shorter, smaller. Not when the knives are folded up, of course. Uh, and last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and its little brother, the Mini Griptilian. Definitely very similar in overall size to the Mini Griptilian, but as you can see there, different cutting edge, different length of cutting edge, and much more room on the handle. Um, go ahead and give you a measurement of thickness. I can't fold it, but I'll show you up against the Spyderco Para 3. This is just not a thick object. Uh, the handle scales are definitely thin. So is the blade stock, right? So the disadvantage here versus a folding knife is that it doesn't fold. I'll give you guys a look at that in the sheath. There you go. And then thickness, uh, I mean, like, how can we do this, right? The sheath itself doesn't create any massive additional thickness or anything like that. Um, we'll go ahead and do a hardware check uh, up against the Ontario, I'm sorry, what is wrong with my brain? Up against the Ontario, that's at the beginning of the video. Oh my gosh. I'm sure you can imagine my brain here lately, I don't know exactly when you guys are watching this, my brain here lately has been a bit scrambled due to recent events, <laughs> but I'm fine. Uh, let's see, T8s on both of those. So if you want to remove the scales, it's just a few T8 screws. And I think that's great. I don't have a problem with that at all. Something we didn't do, that's why my brain scrambled. The thing that we didn't do here is put it up against the PM2 and Para 3 in terms of height. Um, so I don't know how much this is going to matter to some people, but it might, right? Uh, it's just not a tall object. I mean, you can't compare length well, you can. I mean, lengthwise, yeah, it's longer than both a PM2 and Para 3 folded up because this is a fixed blade. It doesn't fold, obviously, right? So, um, Height-wise, though, uh, yeah, it's definitely nowhere near as tall as either the PM2 or Para 3. Um, let's see here. Let's measure blade stock thickness on this guy. Not going to stand up, so that's fine. Blade stock thickness on the Sea Snake is coming in at... Yeah, look at that. Not thick at all. This is a very thin blade. It's going to be a little bit delicate out at the tip, but definitely thin for those of you concerned with your performance slicers, right? Uh, yeah, this is going to do that. How about weight on this guy? We are looking at G10 and a uh, very thin stock of AR RPM9. That is, an, that is uh, Artisan Cutlery's proprietary powder form seal. Look at that, 2.29 ounces. How about we weigh it in the sheath? With the sheath, still under three ounces. This is, by my definition, ultra lightweight. Anything that weighs less than three ounces on this channel, I consider it to be ultra lightweight. 
Okay, so what we're looking at here now, I think they do have a few different configurations. This one is OD green, very smooth G10 that has been very nicely knocked down and it's shadow boxed by the tang of the blade, which is cool. It gives it a really clean, straightforward look and I like that. Uh, these are not made in the United States. These are uh, knives that are uh, manufactured in China, which it says right there. Do with that information what you will. As a result of that, these are substantially less expensive than some other competitive fixed blades that are manufactured here. I like my U.S. products, um, but, you know, quality is quality. So, anyways, uh, yeah, the fit and finish here is fantastic. The areas, you know, on either side of the tang that are raised, are it's intentionally done like that. Like I said, it's, it's shadow box, so you're supposed to be able to see the liner over the top, and I like that. Um, I also like, and for whatever reason, on this smaller guy, I kind of like that it's not textured, right? Um, it's not, you know, suggesting that you're going to be maybe in a situation with this knife where you really need that extra texture in your grip. Um, the other reason that I don't mind that it's smooth like this is because we have this nice large forward choil and it allows you to get a full purchase on this knife and you are definitely, definitely locked in. If you do have to do some heavier cutting, you're going to be very comfortable with this. I feel like most of the time I'm going to be holding it like this, but if I, you know, if I needed to, if I needed to break down cardboard boxes or something, yeah, it's fantastic. I love these knives that have Something that I don't quite understand with this knife is why it has this little area right here, right? I mean, if it were a flipper folding knife, I guess. I think this whole area right here probably could have been knocked down a bit so that you're not so specifically confined to either here or here. It would have been nice to be able to choke back or rock back just a little bit if this area wasn't so pointy and pronounced, but that's okay. The position that you're supposed to hold it in, right, if you're choked up, is really comfortable and that jimping extends out quite a ways and makes it really easy to do that. I mean, I I, I don't really have too many ergonomic complaints. It, it's actually very, very comfortable. It's a fixed blade too, so you don't have to worry about the pocket clip. In and out of the sheath, it does come in and out of the sheath just fine. You just kind of push it that right, the retention's there. Um, got a little bit of rattle, right? You can carry these types of things around your neck if you want to. That's not really my preferred way to carry a small EDC fixed blade, but if you want to, it does come with that thing, so you can do that. Something like this, I literally just want to throw in my pocket. Um, I can carry it like this. I would have preferred, it would have been really cool if this thing had a little clip or some sort of integral built in thing, or if they just, you know, drilled a pocket, uh, holes for screws for a pocket clip in there it would have been really neat. It doesn't necessarily need it, but it would keep it from doing this and moving all over the place in my pocket, right? So whatever, that's okay. I'm just trying to think, I mean, like this is the type of knife that I would actually carry. This is a type of fixed blade that I would actually carry an EDC. So it would be kind of, it would have been neat if the, um, the sheath had a clip on it, but I don't know that everybody's really going to share my thoughts on that because when it comes to, you know, EDC style fixed blades, the rules or preferences of carry for a lot of people change. Um, so I don't know how valid of a complaint that was. That's just me. That's just what I want, right? The blade looks fantastic. It is fully flat ground and it is, I'm going to call it a Warncliffe, right? I mean, it might have a very specific classification that I'm not aware of, but I'm going to call this a Warncliffe. Edges up here, nicely knocked down until you get out here where they're not. It's a little sharp out here and that's because we have a satin finish, right? It's not, if it were a tumbled finish, this would have been knocked down. As I usually say, I'm, I'm really, really bored of the satin finish stuff. I just see it on everything. I, I like the tumbled finish. I like, basically anything but satin, but this is fine. It was done well. The edge, very clean, very smooth. The uh, bevels look great on both sides. I mean, honestly, the edge and the, everything here was done really well. Look how thin that gets up there. You definitely have a point that's going to be good for puncturing if you need to, but it's also going to be pretty delicate. This is definitely, definitely not a knife that I would use to poke into something and pry around. Uh, I, feel, I feel like, you know, that's a good way to snap the tip. As per usual, there's a whole bunch of stuff on here I really feel like we don't need, like the serial number, right? And I, I, the, the Mike Emler design logo is fine. Air RPM is nine. Artisan Keller's logo on one side is fine, right? But the serial number in China, I don't know why we need that on there. This thing is really, really straightforward. It's simple. It's not trying to be anything else other than the tool that it was designed to be. It's just... It's a tool. That's what it is. It's straightforward, right? It's meant to make simple, uh, you know, draw cuts or quick slices or whatever. And that's what it's, that's, that's what it's going to do. It's absolutely going to do that. 
Um, you could probably put it through some heavier continuous cutting, like if you're you know, pushing this through the material this way. I uh, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't shy away from thick cardboard or anything. In fact, I would, this is the exact type of object that I would want to use on really, really thick cardboard. Um, I think it was a great idea to go with this blade shape versus a traditional drop point. I think it makes it, I've always said, I think the Warncliffe blade, sheep's foot blades, stuff like that with a nose po points down a little bit. I think those are a little bit better for general everyday tasks, right? So whether you want to EDC this, you want to take it out and use it as a work knife, I think it's going to work perfectly. Um, I, I really do. I, I mean, in a lot of ways, a knife like this could be considered boring, right? I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, how the heck did he even manage to make a 10 minute video out of that? It's literally just two pieces of G10 and an AR RPM 9 blade shaped like a Warncliffe. Um, well, you're on the Metal Complex YouTube channel and I can make a 10 to 20 minute video out of pretty much anything. Not because I'm forcing it, but because I genuinely like stuff like this. Um, this is definitely, definitely a, uh, a fixed blade that I um, would EDC. And in fact, I think I'm actually going, he said, he was like, I want you to keep it, you know. Um, I think I actually am going to periodically throw it in my rotation and use it. It might end up being something that I just keep in my truck, something like that. But what's the price on this guy? Well, that's the best part. The price on this is 40 bucks. Would it have been great if it was $30? Well, yeah. I mean, anything would be greater. It would, I would be happier if it was less expensive. I can't remember a single time in my life where I'm like, this is way less expensive than I prefer that it is. I will not be buying it. <laughs> no. I'm happy with 40 bucks. You can get a high quality budget folding knife for about 40 bucks, right? A lot of people will say, well, something like that's going to be less complicated to manufacture than a folding knife. So why are we paying, you know, why are we still paying 40 bucks for it? A lot of their AR RPM 9 folding knives actually cost more than $40. So maybe that's a little bit there, but do I, do I honestly have a problem with $40? No. In fact, I think I can recommend this all day. Um, as long as it is legal, as long as it is legal in your area to carry a blade that is longer than three inches, I think a lot of you will find, you know, especially if you prefer fixed blades, you'll find that you really like this, right? Some people aren't going to like having to pull the knife out of a sheath every single time. I don't know that I really care all that much. Um, you are definitely going to get uh, a little bit more strength here because it does not have a, uh, you know, the, the weakest point of a folding knife is the pivot. It doesn't really matter how robust everything else is. The pivot, if it's not reinforced properly, is definitely going to be the first thing to fail. A fixed blade, for the most part, is going to be universally stronger in this, this general area, right? From my thumb to my index finger here. As we get out to the tip, obviously, this is tapering, getting really thin. It's going to be weaker, but a knife like this... You might be able to get it through a little bit more abuse than your average folding knife. Um, so that's a good reason, you know, for a lot of people to carry a fixed blade if they are doing a lot of those, um, I call them dad cuts, where it's a knife, but it's also like, like to my dad, it's also a screwdriver and a pry bar and a hammer. It's not supposed to be that, but he's just going to use it for pretty much anything. And a knife that is um, inexpensive, uh, like this, and it's a fixed blade, right? Yeah, you can throw it around a little bit. And then if you screw it up, then, oh, well, it was 40 bucks, right? Um, so, yeah, I think this is going to fit that, you know, if, if that's the way that you use your knives, I think, you know, I, I, I would say don't abuse them because it just makes your life harder when you have to go back and sharpen it. But fortunately, AR RPM 9 should be very easy to sharpen. It'll hold a reasonable edge for a while, right? It's uh, pretty stainless, fairly tough. I mean, I think it's pretty well-rounded, right, for a budget. It's one of the better budget deals that's out there right now, for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I can recommend this to people who are, you know, specifically, they like to carry fixed blades, and they're looking for something small, compact, easy to carry, right? If you want to carry it around your neck, then fine, you know, this, I would carry it like this in the sheath, just in my pocket. This will probably be a, you know, one of the dedicated beater knives or work knives that I take outside and kind of throw it around, because it's a fixed blade, there's no area for gunk to get trapped anywhere, I mean, there's no action to worry about and slow down or anything like that. That can be very, those elements can be very advantageous for a lot of people. Yes, I can recommend this knife. This knife will be going on my most recommended knives playlist, uh, and it'll be uh, it'll also be going uh, on my fixed blade knives playlist. I haven't reviewed a lot of fixed blades, but I have collected all of them in one playlist for you guys. Like I said, you'll be able to find this right down in the description, so if you want to check it out, feel free. I'll also link Artisan Cutlery Knives in general so you can see what else is going on with them.
Thank you very much again, Mike, for sending this in for me to take a look at. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and uh, uh, subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.